All right, everybody, I hope you're doing well. Today's a cool video about two swords that um, are both antique originals. Uh, one derives inspiration from the other one, and I'll go ahead and show you them now. Uh, they are first uh, 1845 slash 55 uh, model French infantry officer's sword, and the uh, 1850 US American foot infantry officer's sword. So um, I'll kind of give you some close-ups here and I'll talk about the history a little bit and then I'll show you, you know, I'll hold them up and kind of show them. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, now that you've seen a little bit of close-ups, um, uh, the first sword, again, was the 1845 French, and the second sword in the pair is the uh, 1850 U.S. foot. So, um, throughout the history of the United States, the French have played a kind of an important role in the uh, foreign affairs of the uh, military. Early American um, military minds took a lot of inspiration from the very effective and powerful French who dominated and were very successful throughout the 17th, 18th, 19th centuries. Um, the French military was very impressive uh, and, the, and uh, they were pivotal in the uh, eventual victory of the Americans during the revolution. They uh, helped out quite a bit towards the end of the war. Um, and as a result, the Americans uh, paid homage to the French by adopting many of the uh, French models of uh, weaponry and swords uh, and uniforms and different uh, aspects of military. So um, here we have two swords who are very, on the surface look very similar, um, but are actually quite different. So um, the French 1845-55 is probably uh, probably my second favorite sword. Maybe it's a tie. Um, the French were extremely good at making swords. This model in particular is uh, made in Chateau Row in the year 1888, um, which is interesting because the French had a kind of a weird um, development cycle making 1845-55 swords. Um, for those of you who don't know, they actually produced and then discontinued and then produced and discontinued and produced and discontinued the sword for, I think, three different times. Uh, the final 
uh, production set where uh, some, somewhere over 30,000 of these swords produced for World War I um, out of Chateau Leroux. So this was quite a common sword for uh, infantry to use and be issued. Um, and as a result, you can find a fair number of these in fairly good condition, this one included. Um, these are distinctive for having this very beautiful filigreed cast bronze hilt with a very shapely horn grip. This one originally had brass wire wrap, but you know, it's an old sword, so it uh, broke off at some point. Um, and the French are famous for writing information on the spines of their sword. So this tells me this was, this tells me the year, the month, where it was made, and what pattern it is, or what model, I mean. Um, it has several proof marks on the hilt. Um, and uh, overall, very, very well-constructed sword. So uh, these are very distinctive for having this uh, sort of double fuller design. You can see there's one broad fuller and then one skinny fuller in the back leading to a slight swelling towards the tip. So you can see it's skinnier here and it broadens out towards the edge and ends in a double fuller. Not all of these patterns had this, but most of them do. Um, and what you get is a uh, pretty authoritative cutter and a very good thruster because uh, it's stiffer with those two fullers uh, but also that broadening out this sort of creates a leaf shape and aids in cutting. Uh, these were beloved by their uh, users. The uh, officers who were issued these absolutely adored these swords and you can see photos of uh, men in World War I. Uh, there's a famous one of uh, a uh, infantry captain standing with one sort of between his legs um, in 1916. So they were carried well into World War uh, I, uh, which is interesting because the model is 1845 and in 1855 they were updated. So they originally were issued with uh, leather scabbards with brass shapes. Um, they subsequently ditched that in favor of a uh, steel one. Now this is an 1845-55 so therefore it was issued a um, matching numbered uh, steel scabbard. Um, the digits are on this uh, ring here for the for the uh, belt loop. Um, and this is sort of a standard 19th century look. So um, as you can see, quite a beautiful sword and very important in the development of the American 1850-foot officer's sword. So I'll go ahead and hold these two swords up here and you can see that the filigree is almost identical. Um, the uh, hilts are very similar. I would say of the two, the French produced a better sword. Um, they constructed it better, more uh, robust. The hilt on the French sword is beefier, it's bigger, um, and it is made with buffalo horn, whereas the American sword it's made with wood core. Um, there is a wood core in the French sword, but it is covered in buffalo horn, um, which produces a very strong handle. This one is a wood core with chagrin, which is shark skin, with a wire wrap. The wire is still present here. There'd be wire on the French one, um, and the knuckle, go, knuckle bow is straighter compared to the French, and it's more less beefy so all these up you can see there's a substantial difference in the scale of these two handles the American being more dainty and lighter 
uh, also the Americans is sort of a two-piece affair where the butt cap is put on and then screwed into place here. Not so with the French. The French is a single casting. So it's made all in one piece and the handle is slid in um, and fitted. So quite impressive. Uh, the US one is missing its leather washer so the hilt is loose. I'm going to be fixing that at some point. Um, so yeah, the uh, like I said, the US took a lot of inspiration and cues from the French. Um, and this sword is basically a dead giveaway as to uh, one of those examples. Um, the 1850 foot would have been issued with a leather scabbard with brass fittings. I don't have that. Um, it's disintegrated or lost. So um, this style of saber is of the through tang designs. So the kind of have the tang that is peened on the end. Um, the, this 1845 French is my favorite. Um, there are several others that the French produce like the 1822 infantry saber or infantry sword. Um, uh, there's several that come from the 1890s with straight blades. I like this sort of curved one with the two fuller. Um, slightly, slight curve lends to a good cut. And uh, I just think overall it's a quite a lovely sword. Um, this handle shape in particular, quite nice. These old swords remind me of uh, antique violins in a way, or stringed instruments from the 19th century. They're very elegant. Um, there's a good aesthetic. And uh, the that lends something to the performance. Um, not only do you have a you know a beautiful sword, but you have a very functional sword, and a sword that was loved by the men who carried them. Now, obviously, over time, uh, infantry officers throughout the 18th and 19th century uh, were persuaded more into a thrust-centric sword design, so they adopted the militaries that adopted straighter and straighter swords, more rapier-like, until you end up with some of the cavalry swords that are just uh, straight piercing blades. This is sort of one of the last true cut and thrusts that the French used and I think it's a uh, almost a perfect design. So um, of the French swords this is my favorite. Um, and I'm very tickled that the US and I'm not at all surprised that the U.S. chose to adopt a very similar type of sword. Made a few modifications, but overall, a very similar sword. Um, they do include two fullers. I think the original example that they got from the French, the 1845 example, had a set of fullers that ended very far out from the tip of the blade. Um, so they adopted that because I've seen almost every one of these with this fuller design. <clears throat> and the uh, tip is just a little bit more rounded on the end there than the French one. So yeah, overall, um, two very beautiful swords. Um, the French in particular, because of its robust nature, I'm really not surprised that it's held up better than the American sword. Um, American sword, like I said, is a little daintier, slimmer, uh, lighter, whereas the French sword is beefier and more robust. Um, and you know, the French they went through a whole lot of conflicts with this with these swords. They went through, uh, you know, several dozen, including the Crimean War, um, obviously World War One. Uh, they were in several different countries with these types of swords. And uh, it's a testament to the design that they kept remaking them. Uh, obviously, in World War One, they it was out of necessity because they needed swords. Uh, they thought they needed swords for their officers, so they instead of making the current models, they had the tooling at places like Chateau Leroux to just pump out 
1845s, and they sure did. Um, I think like it's thinking from 1914 to 1915, they made like over 30,000. Uh, so quite a quite a number of swords. So yeah, that's this uh, video on the uh, 1845 French infantry officer's sword and the 1850 American foot officer's sword. I'll go ahead and do some more close-ups and I'll close the video out. Again, I think the French one is a better sword. Um, Casting is better quality. The construction is more robust. But they're both very beautiful, very historical swords. Uh, 1850 was used obviously in the Civil War heavily. And uh, the French was used all over the world. So, thanks for watching this video. I have more swords, more videos coming on swords. Um, a big sword fan. So, I, uh, I'll talk to you later. Have a good night.